Thanks so much for clicking on this video. Good morning and happy Easter. Woo! Today's morning devotional is going to come to you out of John chapter 20, looking at verses around 26 through 30. Here's the first verse that I wanted to read, which was chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 20, verses 26. And it says, after eight days, his, his disciples were again in a house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them and he said, peace be with you. Now, one of the coolest things that I love to look at is Thomas, or a lot of people recognize him as doubting Thomas because when Jesus walked in you know that he was the first one that Jesus talked to because he was the one just previously that said unless I can put my fingers in the holes that were pierced in his hands in his side in his feet then I don't think that you guys are of right mind he is not back and then Jesus does walk in with the doors locked and Thomas was all Here's a thought that I wanted to get into with this devotional this morning. And one of the big things is these guys' lives have completely been flipped upside down. Can anyone, I don't know, say something in their life that has flipped their life upside down? I don't know if I can think of one. Obviously at this moment in our life, our lives are definitely flipped upside down in a weird, weird way. Like, come on, this has never happened before in history. And now we're right in the moment of, of this Easter season. Dude, this relates so much to what's going on in our life right now. Now, the disciples thought that their leader, the person that they followed, the person that they got all of their answers from was gone. They literally for the last eight days have been grieving and they did not know what to do. They didn't know where they were going to go from here. They were just lost. Come on, man. Look back through this calendar of how long it's been since spring break. Since right after we got home from the ski trip, some of you, and for the others that whenever you were done with spring break, then we were waiting on that word. Is school going to happen? Are we going back? What's going to happen? What are, are we, what are we doing? Are we doing what everybody else in the country is doing? And lo and behold, it's been weeks now and we're still at home with our family. We're still communicating through videos and through uh, our video phone, um, through text messages, emails, whatever it is that you guys are using. Our lives have been completely flipped upside down. So why am I talking to you this today of all days on Easter? Today we're supposed to celebrate, not be down, not be sorrowful or anything like that. We're supposed to celebrate and what can we celebrate? I think that this message in particular has to do with our current lives more than anything right now because we need to look on the bright side. We need to take into consideration that these guys are going through kind of the same thing that we are right now, their life, in that their life is being flipped upside down. That they don't really know what direction they're supposed to go in. That they're not really sure how they move on from this because it's such a huge event happening. His words at the end of that very first verse, peace be with you. Now more than ever, we need peace in our life. We need comfort, we need joy, and especially we need some sort of celebrating. We are now beginning the Easter uh, tide, if you would call it. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called Easter tide. I had to look it up, but yes, it's Easter tide, and it actually runs from today, Easter Sunday, all the way through Pentecost, which this year looks like we're observing Pentecost on May 31st. And that's supposed to specifically be a time of celebration. What? What? Point being that we have something that we need to go off of. We have an opportunity to not be down in the dirt, but to be up high in a positive light. Jesus, his first words were, peace be with you. How can that be more in your life now than ever? Because it's really, really hard to find that. But in celebrating what he did, and how all of his disciples, most of his disciples, 11 at least, were coming out of this moment on a pretty far low. 
Jesus proclaimed to them his message to go and make disciples of all nations, but his first words still, peace be with you. Man, take heart. Peace. Calm yourself. Know that it's going to be okay. Things happen and we can do something from this. We can still live. We can still become. We can still be. One of the biggest things that I really like to go off of is the amazing scripture that our uh, author um, King David wrote in Psalm 62. And this is verse 5. It says, Oh, I must find rest in God only, because my hope comes from Him. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. I'm going to read it one more time. I want you to take these words to heart. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Psalm 62, 5 Uh, says, Oh, I must rest in God only, because my hope comes from Him. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. King David is believed to be the author of that scripture, and he expresses his feelings to God and then reaffirmed his faith. Prayer can help release our tensions in times of emotional stress, which is exactly what we see in this passage. Prayer. I've said it to you guys so many times, and I know that it ends up being something that is so repetitive, but I think these words are so true and important for you to hear. The more you spend time with anybody, the more you become like that anybody. So if you spend time communicating in prayer with God, guaranteed the more you will become like God. If you spend time with someone who's super positive, you will become super positive. If you spend time with someone who's negative, you will sadly become negative. The more time you spend alone with God, then you will become more like God. And who is more peaceful and loving than Him? Have a great week. Can't wait to see you guys on Wednesday. Happy Easter.